Let's begin by opening Eclipse. I have it pinned down here to my start bar, but you can easily go through your start menu and type Eclipse, or if you're on a Mac using the magnifying glass at the top right, which is called Spotlight Search, you can also search for Eclipse. Now, Eclipse is going to open up to wherever we left off. Uh, it's going to ask me which my workspace is, and this is the workspace I always use for this class. Uh, it's going to open up wherever you left off. If you last were working in Eclipse on a haiku, then it's going to pull up your haiku. I don't remember what I was doing last in Eclipse, so let's see. Looks like I was doing a Hello World program, which works. So, in simple programs that just have one or two lines of code, it really is not difficult to know what's going on in your program, because all of this public static void main stuff is, is stuff that you get when you check the box. But really, so far, your programs are all lined up here in the middle, and every line of code looks like the next one. So if you did your haiku, um, this is not a haiku. So this would be my code to, to write a haiku. It has three simple lines. And we talked earlier about how these curly braces line up and about how these curly braces match. And so the, the, the space that's involved here that's not code is called white space. White space can take the form of spaces, where you hit your space bar and you move over a bunch. White space can take the form of tabs, where you use your tab key and it moves over five or seven or four, depending on how it's set up. It'll move over a certain amount. It can also be returns. So if you decided that you wanted to have the, the lines in your haiku separated with new lines in between them so that you could read them like that, that's no problem whatsoever. Whatever makes your code more readable to people who are looking at it, that's our goal here with white space. We happen to have one empty line at the top of the program. Um, there, there are going to be things we learn how to type up there later. So what we're talking about is ways to make your code more readable. Another way you can make your code more readable is with comments. Comments, single line comments begin with two forward slashes and you can write English here. This is the first line of my haiku. And again, just slash slash, this is the second line of my haiku. And you can write any English you want that is school appropriate after two slashes. All of the comments you type are ignored by the computer. So if you need to label your code, if you need to make notes to yourself to explain what's going on, definitely that's what these comments are for. Through a combination of comments and white spaces, you're going to be able to make computer programs that are much easier to read. Now, all the white space is actually ignored by the system that, that it's called the compiler, which compiles your code from Java code into stuff that's runnable by the computer. But it, it doesn't mean you don't need to type it. You need to type white space so that you can create code that's readable by not just yourself and your peers, but also by your teacher. If you ever need me or your on-site teacher to look at your program and figure out what the matter is, we're not going to be able to tell easily what the matter is if all of your code is lined up against the left-hand side. So what if your code is all lined up against the left-hand side and it's, it's just smushed up over here? What can you do? Well, the first thing I normally do is I put tabs in and I put spaces in. And if your code is all just nasty and junky like this, it will work. And I'm going to demonstrate that it will work here in just a second. After, well, not without that curly brace. After I've, after I've junked up the code. So there's an ugly program. See how much harder that is to read? So if I were to hit play and run this code, definitely I'll get my haiku out at the bottom as I expected. Hello, Moixland. This is not a haiku. Vegetable. Is that vegetable? That's only four syllables. Nope. Certainly not a haiku. But what can you do to make this better? Well, the first thing you want to do is you want to indent. And you want to indent after every curly brace that will begin a line of indention. So I'll just come through here and indent every line. I'm using my arrow keys and my tab keys, whoops, and my tab keys, and this certainly is one way to do it. 
Now you'll notice that that was one curly brace, one indent, two curly braces, two indents. So when we're going backward, we'll have curly braces that indent from then and then to then. And if you if you notice, the last curly brace lines up with the line of code that it matches, and the next to last curly brace lines up with the line of code that it matches, and all of the code between those curly braces is properly indented. Now, if you are lazy, you know, n never to accuse students of being lazy, there's actually a menu item built in. It's called source correct indentation. But it doesn't work unless you have your source code highlighted. So you can do control A, command A, and then do source correct indentation, and it will scoot your code over for you. It doesn't fix everything. It won't fix these curly braces. It won't make them just right, and it won't put extra lines in here where I think if we're, if we're commenting line by line, I think we need some extra spaces in there to make that visible. Definitely won't do that. So white space is the use of tabs, spaces, and new lines, which is pressing return on your, on your, on your keyboard to make that code more visible. In our next activity, I'm going to give you broken code that you will need to then fix. And the way you're going to fix it is by typing it all in ugly, or actually you can copy and paste it from the assignment, and then spacing it out and finding out how what the student wrote doesn't exactly match what they needed to write.